Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I wanted to go over my sabiki or my damashi that I make to catch opelu. And for you guys that have been here before, I have a new little studio that I'm trying out. I bought some lights and a little bit nicer camera for these kind of um, tutorial videos. So you're gonna need three things for this sabiki or damashi tutorial. You're gonna need these gold smaller hooks. Um, I like to use offset ones. These mustad beak hooks are really nice. Um, they're gold and they're a really good size for opelu mouths, so these have been my favorite so far. But you're also going to need these gold Capanya Lures Bloodworms. Um, there's other companies and there's other types of baits to use, but these ones have been my favorite. They're 1.5 inch and the gold sparkly is what I think catches the most. So, one more thing that you're going to need is this J-Line. I like to use 12 pound test. I know guys that use 14 pound test. Um, and they say it catches just fine. Um, this is just what I happen to have right now, so I'm trying to use the whole thing. The last thing you're gonna need is a four ounce bank sinker. Um, these are the ones that I found to be the best. A lot of other guys use this too. The weight's good on the drop, so it doesn't drop too fast, but it also doesn't drop too slow. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this. Grab your line. Don't cut it off the spool yet. I kind of just pulled out, I don't know, a foot or two first. And then I put on my hooks. So I always do, four hooks. One, two, three, four. Some guys do five. Um, I don't like five. It's a little bit more chaotic and you usually don't catch more than three opelu at a time. So you just leave them on the, uh, the line like this. And the first thing you do is you're going to tie a surgeon's loop. Okay, sorry. I had to change my lighting real quick. So just start I'm doing this big so you guys can see, but I just made a loop. And you do an overhand knot with that loop. Then you have this little overhand knot loop. Take the end, put it through, and you've created another little opening or another little loop and you send the end through. Grab it, hold the tag end in the main line, tightens up and this is a non-slip um, loop end which there's a lot of knots that do this but this is just the one that I learned cool so then now you're left with just that and then you can cut off the tag end so I'll grab my pliers you can do it as short as you want I usually just leave like a centimeter boom so this is my end right here now we go on to the actual hooks. So I'm gonna do something, I like to do mine with a dropper loop. And, but it's kind of a variation, it's a twisted dropper loop. So you grab both ends of the line, like this, and one finger spins one way and the other one spins the other way. So that happened really fast, but you can kind of see that now those things twisted on one another. Let's see if I can get that to focus. All right, so now it twisted. And then from there, you do your dropper loop. So what I do is I hold it above these two fingers and I make one little loop. Okay, do you see that opening I just made? Now with that opening, grab the main line and make a little rainbow shape inside the loop so then you twist the rainbow around i do it about uh four or five times the more you do it the stronger it is but it doesn't um it doesn't knot up as nicely if you do too many twists then you send i don't know if you saw that but then you send the hook itself through the little hole that you created by twisting that thing around. Then it should look something like that. Kind of pull down. There you go. So it should, it should have that shape as you're tying it. This is where I wet it with um, some saliva. I'll just do that off screen. And then just pull to completion. Boom. All right, so that's my dropper loop with the twist variation. And then you just do that for all the hooks. 
Okay, when it comes to spacing and how to space out your hooks, I'm gonna zoom out for this one. I like to do, I measured it one time and it's 13 inches um, and I do that based off of the length of my pole. So it really depends on how long um, your pole that you're using. I use a seven foot pole and I space them out 13 inches in between each hook um, with about 10 inches on this, on the first, from the loop to the first hook. So yeah, that's about 10 inches, 10 inches, yeah. So then now we're gonna do 13, which I just eyeball it now, but it's about this much. And if you think about it, it really is just the length of a full grown Apelu because you don't want the Apelu to bite this hook and the tail gets snagged on this hook because if they're too close, you always, um, Apelus will snag themselves and then kind of bleed themselves out. So you want them spaced out the size of one Opelu, like a bigger Opelu, so like that. And so you gotta compensate a little bit for your twist because that takes up some line. So do my twisty thing again. Okay, so I just did my twist. And you make it about, what is that, like, like half of my index finger long. It gets a little bit shorter as you tighten it. Okay, so now I have it between my fingers and I make another loop. And I put mine um, right over the left. Okay, now that I put it right over the left, I hold it. And then I put this main line and make a little U shape, rainbow shape, inside like that. And then you just twist that over. And I don't know if I do this like a weird way, but it's just the way that works for me. Twist it over a couple times. And you grab the hook and you put it through that rainbow shape. Boom. And then kind of hold the main line. It kind of looks like this right at the beginning. Hold the main line. Pull it through a little bit. Now it should look like that. And you, if it's a little too long, like right now this is a little too long, I'll just pull out some of the this top part, it kind of looks like ears. And then you tighten it right there. So that's number two. I'll just skip uh, number three and four. Okay, so what you do is you leave about a foot and a half between the end and the last hook and th this is the point where you can actually cut off the line from the spool so I already did that okay and then you just end it with another surgeon's loop okay so it should look like that cut off the tag end Okay, and the way you put this on the weight, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit for this. The way you put it on the weight, is you grab the end of it, put it through that loop right there, just like that, and then you put the weight through. Boom, no tying involved when you're actually out in the water. Okay, now that we've actually finished the rig, let's put on the baits, and there is a best practice I think for this which is to feed it on the hook itself and so the way I do this is I hold the hook up just like that in the top of the bait head put between my fingers and you just put the bait straight on and you feed it through the middle of the bait the whole time you keep sliding it up I just pinch the grub and keep pushing and it starts sliding up naturally you see that over the hook bend over the hook bend you do it till it goes about that far and that's when you can pull on the tail and it, the hook will pierce through the bait Whoa. pierce through the bait it'll look like this first but then you just keep feeding it up and I like feeding it over the eye of the hook down and it goes actually onto the line itself so you can kind of see that maybe I'll do my darker side of my skin and yeah so do that for all your baits 
it makes them a lot um, stay on the hook a lot better when they're done like that instead of just through the head on the tip okay the sabiki is all done so the longer side is the one where the sinker goes on and when it comes to storing it I grab my plastic bag like this and I do it bottom first so open it up just kind of feed the sabiki in almost like you're dropping it inside and the reason why I do it like this is because when you pull it out it actually pulls out really easy if you did the bottom first And then this is a little finishing touch I think is easier. Um, so I don't actually put the top loop in. So I zip it up and I actually leave the loop hanging out. And the reason why I do that is because when I'm actually out in the water, all I have to do is grab the clip, clip it first, then open the bag and it all just comes out really easily. So this is the way I like to store my sabikis in. Yeah, it fits really well. You can even fold it if you need some more space. Um, just kind of let the air flow out and look how small that is perfect for a kayak um, I think it's better than the pool noodle, but some guys still like that, but this hasn't caused me any strife So this is what I do All right, that pretty much wraps it up for my video a little sabiki like this it Takes a couple minutes. I did the math one time and I think it was 75 cents to like a dollar um, for this whole rig and in material so it's a lot cheaper than what you can buy in the stores and homemade ones always work better than the store-bought ones from from my experience and from my other friends experience so anyways thanks for watching and tuning in we'll see you guys next time